Hi, I am Bill Mould. I've been a master mechanic. A little background in aviation. I've been a college professor, seen here teaching an organic chemistry class, a lesson about thermodynamics. I've built between four and 5,000 wheels of every conceivable type. Besides building wheels, my favorite time is spent teaching others how to do it. This short video is about spoke, tensile strength, and elasticity. In another video, we looked at the rhythmic changes of spoke tension, particularly as spokes go through the load-bearing zone. That rhythmic yanking of spokes results that at 22 miles an hour, you get five jerks per second for every spoke. Here we see three supreme spokes of varying dimensions. The one on the top is a straight gauge spoke with a constant diameter of 2.3 millimeters. In the middle is a, another straight gauge spoke with a constant diameter of 2 millimeters. And the one at the bottom is a double butted spoke, 2 millimeters at the ends, but narrows down to 1.8 millimeters in the long middle section. From Supim, you can see the data shown here in terms of the strength of the middle section in newtons per square millimeter. If I multiply that by the number of square millimeters in the midsection, then I get the tensile strength of each spoke in first newtons and then in kilograms of force and finally in pounds. As one example of this, if we look at the top spoke all the way on the right is the tensile strength in pounds, 1,055 pounds. So if I attached a spoke to the ceiling and hung on it a barbell, I could have as much as 1,055 pounds on the barbell without breaking the spoke. This is a picture of me in my laboratory, and you can see that I have on that rear wheel 320 pounds on the bottom bracket, and the wheel is supported entirely by just one spoke. Here we see the tensile strength again in terms of newtons and kilograms of force. I took pounds out because we rarely use that. Next to that is the target tension, and we'll say we're going to use a target tension of 120 kilograms of force on wheels that we're going to build, and the force is also 1177 newtons. Now the tensile strength is interesting, but what's really important is the yield tension, which we're going to now put some numbers into. An important observation is the following here. The tensile strength of each of these spokes is enormously higher than the tension that would be put on the spokes in a wheel. And no spoke in any wheel at any point in time when you're riding it will come anywhere near its tensile strength. So the tensile strength of the spoke is really not significant when it comes to designing a wheel. Here I am at Duke University doing some testing in the engineering laboratory. This little device here called an extensiometer will measure the stretching or strain on the spoke as loads are put on it. And all of the data is captured and graphed on a computer. Here are some recorded data for a Supreme race spoke. I fit a straight line against that curve, and the straight line and the curve depart at about this point here. At that point, which is the yield point of the spoke, at which point further stretching of the spoke will cause it to be somewhat plastic in its deformation rather than elastic, which is what we want, and that occurs at about 143 kilograms of force. Actually, it's a little bit higher than that. So I can put that bit of data in there for my Supreme race spoke at the bottom. Now, spokes are elastic in a bicycle wheel. 
This is the modulus of elasticity equation. The modulus E is defined as the tensile stress divided by the extensional strain. And over on the, uh, the right there, we have in the numerator force divided by the beginning cross-sectional area in the numerator, and the denominator is the stretched length after a load is put on it minus the starting length divided by the starting length. I can rearrange that little equation. And just to simplify this a little bit, what this really is telling me is that if I have two spokes with the same applied tension, the same elastic modulus, but different diameters, then the strain or the stretching of the spoke is inversely proportional to its cross-sectional area. And this means that as the cross-sectional area, A0, on the right goes down, since that is in the denominator, then the strain of the spoke increases. In other words, a thinner spoke will stretch more than a thicker spoke, which logically makes sense. So comparing these two spokes here, if the same tension is put on them, the spoke at the bottom, which is thinner in the middle, will stretch more. We can illustrate this quite nicely with some rubber bands. Here are four rather thick and strong rubber bands, and I'm going to connect them with, on the top, a thick rubber band, and on the bottom, a thinner rubber band. And now we're going to see what happens when I stretch both of these spokes. The four thick rubber bands are going to represent the elasticity of the spokes at the ends where the spoke is two millimeters thick and then the other two rubber bands represent the difference in the thickness of the spoke in the long midsection. In the top picture with a strong rubber band in the middle when I put a force to try to stretch them all three rubber bands share in the stretching but at the picture at the bottom since the middle rubber band here is thinner most of the stretching is taken up by the middle rubber band and the two at the ends are left pretty round now here is our wheel and the red spoke is one that is going to be the point of our examination and we can represent that by the three rubber bands and we'll see what happens as this wheel spins many many times as the wheel spins, the rubber bands on the left, representing the thick spoke, go something like this. And over on the right, where the spoke is thinner in the middle, I see a picture more like this. With my straight gauge spoke on the left, a lot of the stretching and strain on the spoke occurs at the ends as well as in the middle. Well, the spoke is vulnerable to breaking on the ends where the elbow is and where the threads are. That's usually where spokes break. Whereas the one on the right, because I have a thinner midsection, that stress and strain load on the ends of the spoke is more moved toward the middle where the spoke is not vulnerable to breaking. This is a spoke I like to use sometimes, a Supreme force spoke, which is actually triple butted. You see that at the elbow it's 2.2 millimeters thick, at the threaded end 2 millimeters and 1.8 in the middle, and you see the tensile strength figures below. My force spoke has a tensile strength of about 800 pounds. Here is the very popular Supreme CX ray spoke with a tensile strength of 487 pounds. Here is my CX ray spoke holding up a barbell. Now, having confidence in the tensile strength of a Supreme CX ray spoke, I rigged up this block and tackle with a load of 300 pounds or 136 kilograms. And it's all supported by a single Supreme CX ray spoke. Here I am relaxing under that enormous load, having confidence in the tensile strength of that Supreme CX ray spoke.
And that photo was taken nervously by my wife, who realized that if the spoke had broken, I would have been crushed to death right in front of her. If you found this discussion interesting and you would like to learn more about some aspects of wheels that are not commonly understood, you might go to my website and take a look at this very deep dive into all aspects I could think of concerning bicycle wheels. Here is my contact information. Thanks for watching.